Lyles Wren was confined to Stevens Island, a small island of New Zealand. It inhabited the island's dense vegetation, particularly in the scrub and tussock grass areas. It was a flightless bird, adapted to a terrestrial lifestyle. Its wings were short and not capable of sustained flight. It is notable for having one of the shortest recorded durations between discovery and extinction. The species went extinct shortly after its discovery, with the last confirmed sighting in 1895. The primary factor contributing to the extinction of Lyle's wren was predation by introduced mammals, particularly rats and cats. Its story is an example of the vulnerability of island species to introduced predators. Islands often have unique and endemic species that evolved without natural predators, making them highly susceptible to the impacts of introduced mammals. A passerine is any bird of the order Passeriformes which includes more than half of all bird species. Sometimes known as perching birds, passerines generally have an anisodactyl arrangement of their toes, which facilitates perching. With more than 140 families and some 6,500 identified species, Passeriformes is the largest order of birds and among the most diverse clades of terrestrial vertebrates, representing 60% of birds. Velvet acides eat berries and other fruit in undergrowth, and they build hanging nests with a little roof over the entrance. Ant birds are generally small birds with rounded wings and strong legs. They have mostly somber gray, white, brown and rufous plumage, which is sexually dimorphic in pattern and coloring. Some species communicate warnings to rivals by exposing white feather patches on their backs or shoulders. Most have heavy bills, which in many species are hooked at the tip. Most species live in forests, although a few are found in other habitats. Insects and other arthropods from the most important part of their diet, although small vertebrates are occasionally taken. Swarms of army ants are an important resource used by some species of ant bird, and the one from which the family's common name is derived. Many species of tropical ant form large raiding swarms, but the swarms are often nocturnal or raid underground. Because army ants are unpredictable in their movements, it is impractical for obligate ant followers to maintain a territory that always contains swarms to feed around. Ant birds have evolved a more complicated system than the strict territoriality of most other birds. They generally maintain breeding territories but travel outside those territories in order to feed at swarms. The fasciated antshrike is a large ant bird, 18 cm long and weighing 4 grams. The plumage varies by sex, with the male being black with white barring across the whole body. The barring is very faint on the crown and becomes more even further down the body. The crown is rufous on the female, and the rest of the body is brown bared with faint yellow-brown, become yellow-brown barred with brown further down the body. The bill is large and hooked. The fasciated antshrike makes a variety of calls, including lazy plaintive whistles and a rattle-like chatter. The striolated titspine tail is a year-round resident throughout its range. It feeds on arthropods. It usually forages in pairs and occasionally joins mixed species feeding flocks. It forages from the forest's understory to its canopy, gleaning prey from foliage and branches. It often hangs upside down to reach prey. It breeds in the austral spring and summer. It is monogamous. It builds a platform nest of twigs and moss lined with feathers, usually in a natural cavity or an old woodpecker hole. The oscillated tapaculo eats plant material and arthropods, which it digs up using both feet simultaneously. It is usually encountered in pairs or alone, hopping through bamboo along the forest floor. 
preferring to stay close to the ground, it is more often heard than seen. It is possible to attract oscillated tapaculos with recorded or imitated calls, which they will approach to investigate from several kilometers away. Though shy and retiring and affected by habitat destruction like all forest birds of the tropical Americas, it is common enough to be considered a species of least concern. Rare and somewhat enigmatic, giant ant pitta is known only from Colombia and Ecuador. Length ranges from 24 to 28 centimeters and weight is up to 300 grams, which makes it easily the heaviest of all tracheophone subosine birds. Its food are largely terrestrial invertebrates, though arthropods are apparently not of key importance. The main threats are unsustainable logging, as well as land conversion for agriculture or narcotics plantations. Compared to other birds that specialize in following ants, this family is the most tied to the ground. The long, powerful legs and an essentially vestigial tail aid this lifestyle. The ant pittas are sexually monomorphic, they resemble the true pittas in that they are virtually tailless, they hop like some thrushes, and are much easier to hear than see, although their vocalizations may be rather atypical for perching birds. Arrowripe mannequin consumes both plant and animal materials as part of their diet. Approximately 80% of their diet comes from the plant Clydemia bicerata. They consume fruit and arthropods, although fruits are the primary item in their diet. Females have a more diverse diet than males, because the more cryptic olive green plumage of females provides them with a greater degree of camouflage in forests, allowing them to find food with less predation, meanwhile, Males are a very bright white color, which makes them more vulnerable to predation. In 2000 there was an estimated population of less than 50 individuals and it was considered as one of the rarest birds in Brazil and in the world. The long-tailed mannequin is a small, plump bird about 10 centimeters long. Males form a long-term partnership duo or trio. Together they sing in synchrony and, for any female who is attracted by their singing, perform a complex coordinated courtship dance. If she mates, only the alpha male inseminates her. Among many displaying male partnerships in a locality, only one or a very few males may account for the vast majority of mattings in a given breeding season. As in other lecking species, the female then builds the nest and raises the young without involvement by males. This bird has a very wide range, is fairly common and is presumed to have a large total population. The most distinguishing characteristics of the rose-throated becket is the rose-colored neck bib found in adult males. Males are mostly gray in color, with a contrasting darker upper side and a pale gray underside. Males also show a black crown. Females are mostly brown in color, with a rusty brown upper side, and a pale buffy underside. The crown is a dark gray, not nearly as stunning as the males. The becket feeds primarily on insects, which it will glean from the vegetation, but captures some in flight as well. They will also take berries and seeds. The Andean cock of the rock exhibits marked sexual dimorphism, the male has a large disc-like crest and scarlet or brilliant orange plumage, while the female is significantly darker and browner. It eats a diet of fruit, supplemented by insects and small vertebrates. It is distributed all across the cloud forest of the Andes, having a range of around 260,000 km square. Even though it is being affected by the destruction of its habitat, the Andean cock of the rock is not classified as threatened. Cock of the rocks change the surrounding flora through seed dispersal. Seeds that the birds ingest often are found deposited around lek and nesting sites. This favors the germination and growth of those seeds.
The bare-necked umbrella bird is a large, bulky and crow-like bird, being the largest passerine in its range. It is mainly frugivorous, but it has also been known to feed on lizards and invertebrates. Fruits are plucked from vegetation in flight or gleaned with heavy hops. A juvenile was also observed eating arthropods that were flushed out by a swarm of army ants in Costa Rica. Its global population is estimated to be less than 2,500 mature individuals and decreasing. The bare-throated bellbird is found in moist subtropical and tropical forests. The male has white plumage and bristly bluish-black bare skin around its eye, beak and throat. The female is drabber, being olive-brown above with streaked yellow underparts. The male has one of the loudest known bird calls, producing a metallic sound similar to a hammer striking an anvil. Before making such a call, an individual must take a sharp inhale to increase air pressure in the interclavicular air sacs surrounding its syrinx. This bird feeds on fruit and plays a part in dispersing the seeds of forest trees. It is considered near-threatened because of loss of its forest habitat and collection for the pet bird trade. Unlike many other cotingids, they migrate seasonally to different altitudes in Paraguay and East Brazil based on fruit production and the age class of the migrating individuals. Three wattled bellbird is between 25 to 30 centimeters long. Its name comes from the three worm like wattles of skin that hang from the base of the bill. These wattles can be as long as 10 centimeters when extended during songs and interactions. The wattles remain flaccid even when extended. The male shakes the wattles, but otherwise they hang straight down, they are neither erectile nor under muscular control. The side wattles do not stick out to the sides and the central one is not extended directly skywards as shown on some old illustrations and specimens. The purpose of the wattles is unclear. Because of the secretive behavior of this bird, it is often only detected by the distinctive bell-like call given by the males. This hollow, wooden bonk is thought to be among the loudest bird calls on earth, audible to humans from over one kilometer away. The population trend of the three-wattled bellbird is on a downward trend because of destruction of the bird's forest habitat. Banded Katingas are around 20 centimeters long, and males are a bright blue with a black spotted back. The throat and belly are bright purple with a blue band across the chest. It inhabits the canopy of the lowland Atlantic forest, and has a diet of seeds, berries, caterpillars and other insects. It is threatened by habitat loss as its population is estimated to number between 250 and 1,000 mature individuals. Continued habitat fragmentation has also complicated matters, sending populations into a sharp decline. The tyrant flycatchers are a family of passerine birds which occur throughout North and South America. They are considered the largest family of birds known to exist in the world, with more than 400 species. They are the most diverse avian family in every country in the Americas. The members vary greatly in shape, patterns, size and colors. Some tyrant flycatchers may superficially resemble the Old World flycatchers, which they are named after but are not closely related to. Western wood peewee often waits on a perch at a middle height in a tree and fly out to catch insects in flight, and will also hover to pluck insects from vegetation. The scarlet flycatcher appears very similar to the vermilion flycatcher, but can be distinguished by its pointier wings. Their songs are also quite distinctive. Their range and breeding times do not generally overlap with the vermilion flycatcher. The species is monotypic. The generic name combines the ancient Greek puros meaning flame-colored or red and cephalos meaning headed.
The sulfur-bellied flycatcher is a large tyrant flycatcher. The most distinguishing characteristics of this flycatcher are the heavy streaking of its plumage and its pale yellow belly. The bird also shows a rusty brown tail and a black eye stripe. Its call sounds like noises made by squeaky toys. They usually occur in woodlands of montane canyons, at elevations between 1,000 and 2,000 meters they wait on an open perch usually rather high or on top of the tree and fly out to catch insects in flight. They will also take berries and seeds. The name kingbird is derived from their take-charge behavior. These birds aggressively defend their territory, even against much larger birds such as hawks. They will attack humans, livestock, and pets when they think their young are in danger. Kingbirds make a sturdy cup nest in a tree or shrub, sometimes on top of a pole or other man-made structure. Due to the small size of the nest, and the chick's rapid rate of growth, most of them are pushed out of the nest, due to overcrowding, before they are fully feathered and able to fly. They wait on an open perch and fly out to catch insects such as bees, robber flies, winged ants, grasshoppers, and spiders. They are also known to eat berries, buckthorn sumac, and poison ivy seeds. The superb lyrebird is renowned for its elaborate vocal mimicry, with an estimated 70 to 80 percent of the male's vocalizations consisting of imitations of other species, mostly other birds but occasionally marsupials. Its mimicry is highly accurate, with even the model species at times unable to distinguish between model song and mimicked song. For example, one study found that strike thrushes did not respond any differently to hearing their own songs than to hearing imitations by lyrebirds. Generally, juveniles initially learn mimetic items through transmission by older lyrebirds, rather than from the model species themselves. The mimicry of male superb lyrebirds is a well-known example of a sexually selected trait. Females prefer males that produce more accurate mimicry and that have a greater diversity of mimetic songs in their repertoire. The superb lyrebird is one of the largest songbirds in the world. The male has an elaborate courtship display involving its lyre-shaped tail feathers. These feathers can be spread into a wide fan during displays, creating a visually stunning effect. The green catbird is a medium-sized, predominantly green bird with a distinctive appearance. It has a robust body, a rounded head and a relatively short tail. It is known for its loud and varied vocalizations. Its calls include cat-like mewing sounds, which contribute to its common name. The bird is also capable of imitating other bird species. They are primarily frugivorous but their diet can also include insects and other small invertebrates. They play a role in seed dispersal within the rainforest ecosystem. They can be elusive and may use the dense foliage of their rainforest habitat to conceal themselves. Their cryptic behavior makes them challenging to spot despite their vocal nature. McGregor's bowerbird is a medium-sized, up to 26 centimeters long, olive-brown bowerbird of New Guinea's mountain forests. The male is adorned with an erectile orange-yellow crest, that is partly hidden until shown in courtship display. Superb mimics, they are known for imitating other birds, pigs, rushing water and even human speech. The polygamous male builds a tower-like maple-type bower, an elaborate courtship structure, with a central pole of twigs surrounded by a dish of moss with raised walls approximately one meter in diameter. He decorates the twigs of the maypole with flowers, fruits, insects and other objects. The diet consists mainly of fruits and insects. When a female comes in proximity to the bower, the male struts and calls, and opens his crest to display its full color. Hiding the crest except during sexual display is thought to minimize his vulnerability to predators.
Archbold's Bowerbird is a medium-sized, dark gray songbird with brown iris, gray feet and black bill. They can grow up to 37 centimeters long. The male has narrow black scalloping with some trace of golden yellow crown feathers and dark gray forked tail, that's shorter than the wing. It is distributed and endemic to highland forests of western New Guinea. This little-known bowerbird was discovered by Austin Loomer Rand in 1939. The eastern bristlebird is very territorial and will often use a distinct, loud melodic song to mark its territory. Surveys have found the bird prefers to live in small, localized populations, and prefer to build their nests on the ground in areas of dense, clumped grasses. In late 2021, it was estimated that there were only about 2,500 of the species left in the wild, existing in isolated populations in eastern New South Wales and southern Queensland. Because of the small, isolated nature of the populations of eastern bristlebird, it suffers from a lack of genetic diversity, which can lead to extinction. The southern whiteface is a small passerine found in arid regions across most of the southern half of the Australian continent, excluding Tasmania. Superficially finch-like in appearance, this insectivorous bird is relatively common throughout most of its range, however, overall populations appear to be in decline. This species can be distinguished from other whiteface species by its somewhat duller appearance and lack of a breast band, which both the banded whiteface and chestnut-breasted whiteface possess. Spotted partilote has a distinctive and vibrant plumage. The upper parts are olive green, and the bird has prominent spots on its wings and back, which give it its name. The throat is yellow, and there is a black stripe across the chest. These birds primarily feed on insects and their larvae, foraging in the treetops. They have been observed hanging upside down from branches while searching for food. They are cavity-nesting birds. They excavate tunnels in earthen banks or other suitable substrates, creating a nest chamber at the end of the tunnel. The nest is often lined with soft materials such as fur, feathers, or plant material. While some populations of spotted partilotes are sedentary, others may undertake local or altitudinal migrations in response to seasonal changes in food availability. The common smoky honeyeater is a species of bird in the honeyeater family Meliphagidae. It is one of four species in the genus Melipotes, all closely related and forming a superspecies. The species is endemic to the island of New Guinea, where it occurs in the central ranges across the length of the island, as well as two isolated populations in the northwest and north of the island. In total there are 186 species of honeyeaters, roughly half of them native to Australia, many of the remainder occupying New Guinea. Although they look and behave very much like other nectar-feeding passerines around the world, they are unrelated, and the similarities are the consequence of convergent evolution. The extent of the evolutionary partnership between honeyeaters and Australasian flowering plants is unknown, but probably substantial. A great many Australian plants are fertilized by honeyeaters. Like other honeyeaters, the western spinebill feeds primarily on nectar. It feeds for longer time periods, and ingests more nectar, in the first 60 to 90 minutes of each day than it does later in the day. It has been observed foraging at flower spikes lower down in the tree canopy, possibly to avoid larger and more aggressive honeyeaters. It is common in the understory of heaths, coastal scrub, woodlands, and forest, and in banksia thickets. It has a black head, gray back and wings, with a red band behind its neck and from its throat to its breast. Its curved bill is long and slender. 